Hello boys and girls. Uh, my name is Mr. Jones and I'm doing another one of these lessons. If you remember last time I did two of the coolest stories in the Bible, one of which was uh, when the Lord decided to kill someone, uh, one of David's friends, but the Lord did that to teach David how things ought to be done. And then the second story was the story of fire falling from heaven with Elijah and in order to teach the entire people how things ought to be done. Well today we're going to do a lesson on what happens to the people when they don't do it God's way. So this is lesson 67, the fall of Israel. So I always like to start with an essential question. An essential question is why would the Lord God discipline his people? I mean God is love, right? But sometimes the Lord has to discipline people maybe in the same way that you've been disciplined by your parents. Because have you ever been punished for doing something that you knew was wrong? Now that punishment was probably not enjoyable, but when you think about it, you probably deserved it. But have you ever, do you think it would be fair to be punished for something you did not know was wrong? Let me give you an example of that. Some of you might know my son Nathan. He used to teach in the fourth grade. Kind of a big guy. When Nathan was about seven years old, I told him that it was time for him to start taking the trash from the kitchen out to the big garbage cans out in the driveway. Well, the first time he did it, he grabs the, 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 the plastic liner and yanks it out of the bag and kind of bounces it along the floor all the way through the house, getting out to the back door, leaving a tra trail of slime on the floor. And of course, being a dad, I yelled at him. I said, what's the matter with you? Don't you know what you're doing? How come you made a mess here? Now your mom's going to have to clean it up. And he kind of looked at me on the verge of tears. And I said, don't you know how to do this? And he said, no, you never taught me. Oh my goodness. At that point, I realized I messed up because I'm getting mad at him for something that he didn't know how to do. But that's not the point with the people of Israel. So today we're going to learn what happened to God's chosen people, quote unquote, God's chosen people, when they willfully, repeatedly disobeyed what the Lord God told them. He told them, he warned them, he pleaded with them, he insisted, do it my way. And these people didn't. So exactly what did the Lord tell them? Well, this is a very easy thing to answer because perhaps you've heard of the Ten Commandments. The, this one, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. These people were to worship the Lord God and none other. He told them specifically, you shall not make a carved image. You shall not bow down to them. You shall not serve them of the gods of the people around them. Because, you know, they were coming out of Egypt and then they were going into the promised land, the land of Canaan. And there were people living there and those people did not know the Lord God. And the Hebrews were coming into that land and they were going to be tempted to follow those gods. But the Lord told them, don't do it. And you know why? Because of this, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. These were to be God's special people. He then told him this very plainly. When you go into the land of Cana and you're surrounded by all these other people who don't know me and they're going to be doing all kinds of stuff, don't interact with them. He, don't, don't give your sons to marry their daughters. Don't give your daughters to marry their sons. Don't do what they do. And he, then he went on to say this. You shall destroy all of the places where these nations serve their God. You will, on the high mountains and on the hills and under the trees, destroy their churches, basically. Destroy their worship. God had a reason for doing that. And he said, there shall not be any among you who sacrifices his children because those people did human sacrifice. They thought that their gods demanded the blood of humans as a sacrifice. And to our Lord God, that was absolutely an abomination. And then he said this, 
But if you will not obey all of these commandments, the ones he gave to Moses, you know, the Ten Commandments, and then he, in, in the book of Exodus, and then he kind of repeated himself in the book of Deuteronomy, where the Lord said, these are the things I want you to do. Obey all these things, and it will go well with you in the land that I will give you. But if you will not obey those commandments, all of these curses shall come upon you. And in the book of Deuteronomy, there's a bunch of them that are listed. And guess what happened? The Lord God said this multiple times. He said it through Moses. He said it through the prophets. Obey me and live. Obey me and do what is right and you will have blessings and blessings and blessings. But if you don't, and these people didn't, what did they do? You remember this, DDSS? Don't do stupid stuff. They did stupid stuff. Here's what the people of, of Israel did. They did not listen to the Lord. They stopped reading his word. They stopped listening to his prophets. They stopped doing his... They, they worshiped the gods of the people all around them. They gave up the Lord their God who brought them out of the hand, out of, the hand of Pharaoh, out of the land of slavery, who brought them across, the, parted the Red Sea in order to bring them through, parted the Jordan River in order to bring them through. They started worshiping other gods. They made altars on the high places, on all the hills and mountains and things like that. And it's kind of, kind of silly if you think about it, because they figured that, that the gods were up in the clouds somewhere, and so if you built a church on top of a hill, you were actually closer to, to these gods. But the Lord said, don't do that. But they did it anyway. They carved idols, uh, representations of what they thought their gods looked like, whether it was a golden calf like in Moses' time or anything. They made statues. They made Asherim poles. They did all these other things that the people around them were doing. They practiced magic. They called upon spirits. They listened and followed false prophets who were preaching a different religion, or were preaching wrong things about God. They ignored the Sabbath. They ignored the Holy Days, the Passover Feast, the Day of Atonement, all of these uh, celebrations that God created to remind the people of that they were slaves, but God brought them out because they were his chosen people. They ignored them. They stopped doing them. And probably one of the worst things was this. They made human sacrifices to these pagan gods, and they included using their own children. Now, a little bit of history lesson here. So here is a poorly drawn map of generally that part of the world. So you have the most recognizable feature on the face of the earth, the peninsula, which is shaped like a boot, ready to kick something, and that's uh, basically Italy, or in those days, the Roman Empire. And then you have Greece, and then you have Asia Minor, what we now call Turkey, and you have Asia over here, and you have Africa over here, and then in this area would be Egypt, and then this area would be Saudi Arabia and the Sinai Peninsula, so the Jews kind of had to cross the Sinai and, and uh, come into the Promised Land around this way. So here's a bigger version of it. So right down here is where the nation of Israel settled. So over here you've got the Nile River and the, uh, the Empire of Egypt. Over here you have the Tigris and the Euphrates Rivers, which are various empires at different times. One called Assyria, one called Babylon, one called Persia. And you know the Persian Gulf and the Caspian Sea and all that. So over there is kind of Europe. Over here would be modern-day Russia. Over here would kind of be like China. And over here would be like India. And the United States is sitting way over there next, uh, next to uh, the, the file cabinet, right? So why am I showing you this? It's kind of interesting how geography plays an issue in human life. All of this area is desert. I mean like dry desert. But there was a lot of wealth to be had in the Nile River Valley where Pharaoh's Egypt was, and there was a lot of wealth to be had in the uh, what is called the Golden Crescent, the Tigris and the Euphrates River. But the only way to get from here to here, because you couldn't go this way and cross the desert, you had to come over to the coast and come down through a very narrow strip of green, lush, and fertile lands around the Jordan River. That's where the Hebrews were settled in the land of Cana. God chose that to put them there for a very specific reason, on promise to Abraham and to his descendants. Being there puts Israel in the middle of competing empires. And this 
sounds like politics because it is. And the leaders of the nation of, of Israel and the nation of Judah began working political deals, treaties, agreements with kings and emperors of the Egyptian empire and the Assyrian empire and later Babylon and Persia. Instead of trusting the Lord their God, who brought them out of Egypt, they start messing around with politics. They're putting their trust in princes and leaders of men. And God warned them about that. So what starts to happen here? Assyria is growing and getting bigger, and they want to control this territory. Israel is kind of in the way. The kingdom of Judah is kind of in the way, because down here is Egypt and they want to push up in this direction and they find themselves in the middle. Why does this make a difference? It's like this. You got to think back and see the long picture of history. When God created Adam and Eve in the garden and then created most of mankind and then repented because of their evilness and he brought the flood and he destroyed humanity and s rebuilt it using Noah and his children and then nations begin to separate and, and uh, in the land of Ur of the Chaldeans which is kind of where Babylon was Abram was chosen by God to start a nation and the nation would have peoples as numerous as the stars and these people ultimately end up in Egypt and they became slaves to Pharaoh until God raises up Moses. So Moses leads the Hebrew people out of slavery and into the land of Cana. Twelve tribes settle in various regions around the area of Cana and they go through a, a period of time where they are ruled by judges, prophets who were raised up by God, and then they wanted a king, uh, starting with Saul, and then David, and then Solomon, and then David's grandson messes up and the kingdom divides itself into two parts. On the north you have the kingdom of Israel, the nation of Israel, and that was ten of the twelve tribes. In the south you had Judah, Judah and Benjamin, and they were only two tribes. So the Hebrew people are now divided between Jerusalem, uh, uh, between Judah in the south with the capital city of Jerusalem, the city of David, where the temple of God is, where the Lord said that he would meet with his people. And you have the northern tribes who then start their own religion, right? So Israel starts playing politics between both Egypt and Assyria, playing both sides against the middle. In the year 732 BC, before Christ, Assyria invades, conquers Israel, and then deports those ten tribes and they basically disappear into history. There was no returning, no returning from that uh, dispersal. The Lord God's justice burst forth on these people because they consistently refused to obey the Lord. He sent Moses. He sent a dozen of his prophets. He worked miracles before them. He gave them the written word. He created a temple where his presence was. They created festivals and memorials to, rem to remind the people and educate the people. And the ten northern tribes just kind of went, Psh, whatever. And the Lord wouldn't put up with that. He warned them and warned them and pleaded and begged and sent his people saying, stop, just stop. Stop! Obey me! Return to me! And in fact, he says in the book of Joel, he says, even now, even now, declares the Lord God, return to me with all your heart. Return to the Lord, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness. And they said, no thanks. And the Lord judged them harshly.
And those people were carried away into captivity, dragged away from their homes, dragged away from everything that was familiar to them, dragged away from the graves of their ancestors. Families were split up and dispersed. Some people were sold into slavery. Some people were simply removed. A lot of people were killed. God's justice burst forth against Israel. But what about Judah? The, the southern kingdom. We'll learn, we'll learn about Judah in an upcoming lesson. But I think the thing to really take away from this is this. God is loving and kind and holy, but he is also just. And his sense of justice is long-suffering and patient. But there comes a time where the justice of the Lord will stand up for his namesake. And the people of Israel they suffered. Thank you. Do they look at what happened to Israel and say, whoa, we better knock this off? You think they did that? We'll find out next time. Thank you for your kind attention. We'll see you in a few lessons.